Sponsoring today's video, we have our monthly sponsor, GVG Mall, offering you a Windows 10 Pro serial key for only $17, and if you use my SKAG code, you get 20% off, lowering the price to $13. After the payment, you'll receive the key in no time, and you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings, and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys! <laughs> Hello guys, it's Shit Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So, some time ago I saw a video of a guy that actually decreased the frequency of his Ryzen 5 3600 to 800 MHz to see how it would perform just in the name of science. And that made me think, how would Ryzen, uh, a recent Ryzen, scale in terms of frequency? I wanted to do that video, I wanted to know to myself and to show you guys how it would scale. Is it useful for anyone? No, it isn't useful, but it is in the name of science and most of you maybe want to see something like this just for the fun, just for uh, the information in it. And I wanted to show you that. So I wanted to do... To so I wanted to do that with my Ryzen 5 5600X since uh, the 5000 series are currently uh, the, the CPUs with the highest IPC in the mainstream market. Sadly, my X570 Strix F, my motherboard, wouldn't let me reduce the multiplier of the CPU below 28, which wouldn't be enough for what I wanted to do, so I used my test build with my, my B450 Tomahawk Max 2, and that motherboard let me decrease the frequency, so I made it. In that motherboard was my Ryzen 7 3800 XT, so I used the Ryzen 7 3800 XT, thanks AMD by sending the, the CPU, for sending the CPU by the way, and my RX 5700 XT, so these are the parts used. And well, that's enough chit chat, don't forget hit like, subscribe and share this video, uh, and let's go to the results that you are eagerly waiting to see. Today's first game is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Take in consideration that the GPU will bottleneck at 1080p very high in early stages, hence the averages being all within the margin of error after 2GHz. As for specific results, I was surprised when I saw them, I mean, it was obvious that the game would stutter like hell with only 1GHz frequency, but I was surprised that even 2GHz could bring an average of 85 FPS, which is quite insane in a game like AC Valhalla. Although, averages aren't all. And as we can see, the more frequency our CPU has, the higher the 1% lows are, meaning that the game will be way smoother. This is a good example for people getting low-end CPUs with high-end GPUs, showing them that averages alone aren't that important. Hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. Today's second game is Control, which as known is a GPU heavy game. That can be easily seen because at even, even at around 90 average FPS, anything over 2 GHz will virtually have the same results, with small variations of up to 3 FPS. Basically, almost nothing. The most stunning thing is that even 1 GHz can run this game in this part 
with an average of 88 FPS and more than 60 FPS in the 1% lows, which is fairly impressive for 1 GHz. Overall, not much more to say here. Let's move on. Now with Far Cry New Dawn using Ultra settings. Finally, we start seeing some interesting results with a fairly good scaling. As seen, this game seems to be very CPU dependent. Not CPU heavy since it doesn't use many cores, but definitely CPU dependent. At 1080p with 1 GHz, the game wouldn't pass 35 average FPS, which is pretty bad. Going to 2 GHz gave us a fair 40% over the 1 GHz results, which is pretty good if you ask me. The interesting part is that going over that keeps bringing us fairly better results. 3 GHz makes our FPS numbers jump from around 60 to over 84. 4 GHz gets another big jump to 99. And even 400 MHz more made us go over 100 average FPS, which is good for a game like this. Also, this game would simply make the PC reboot if I tried to run it at 4K with only 1 GHz frequency. God knows why, but it did. Let's move on. Now with Rainbow Six Siege, and as happened before with Far Cry New Dawn, Rainbow Six Siege would simply make the computer restart if I tried to benchmark it with only 1 GHz frequency. Hence, why are not seeing the 1 GHz results because they do not exist. <laughs> as for the other results, well, we can see that this game is really well optimized, with even 2 GHz being able to deliver almost 200 average FPS and being a bottleneck just over 260 as seen at 1080p. Up to 300 average FPS, any frequency over 3 GHz will give you the same results, since this game is really well coded and will focus more on the GPU. Let's move on. Now with the game that I love to use when testing CPUs and RAM, Need for Speed Heat. This game may not seem, but it is really CPU heavy, and we can see that in the results. At 1080p, using the CPU with only 1 GHz gave us a miserable result of 28 average FPS. Going for 2 GHz increased the results to the playable field, let's say, with 50 average FPS and 33 FPS in the 1% lows. Going from 2 to 3 GHz made us go over the 60 average FPS barrier, in this case almost 70, and increased our 1% lows to 46.5, which is a good increase. After the 4 GHz mark, the increase in performance was almost null, apart from a bit more average FPS in the 1% lows, which is normal. This game would also make the PC reboot when trying to run at 4K with 1 GHz and this time even with 2 GHz. Strange. Anyway, let's move to the next game. The last three games will be competitive ones, so let's start with Doom Eternal in the first mission. First of all, I have to say that my jaw dropped when I saw that this game was so well built, that even 1 GHz could run it at around 140 average FPS. One damn GHz could run 140 average FPS in a 2020 game. Going to 2 GHz made the average FPS jump to a huge amount of 249, and those values increased step by step when increasing the frequency more and more. 
The values didn't increase more since we were GPU bottlenecked after 270 average FPS, but it is 270 average FPS, so who cares? Very good results overall. Now it's CSGO, very low settings, playing 3 rounds with bots on Dust2. Take in consideration that I tried to replicate the rounds the most I could, but there will always be some differences. In terms of results, 1GHz runs worse on CSGO than on Doom Eternal, that may be due to the multi-threading optimization. Since Doom Eternal uses more cores, it can kind of compensate per se, the fact that the frequency is way lower, as for CSGO, that does not happen. And that is why the results with 1GHz can't even reach over 85 average FPS, which for CSGO is really bad. Increasing to 2GHz, we get a massive boost of 100 average FPS, and increasing 1GHz again gives us another 100. Crazy. Going to 4 GHz also increases our results, but for around 50 average FPS instead of the previous 100, while 4.4 GHz results are more or less the same. This game would also crash at 4K with only 1 GHz frequency, once again, God knows why. Today's last benchmark is League of Legends, testing 3 minutes in the bot lane against bots. This game is one of the most played games worldwide and is really light and mostly CPU dependent and being a good test I assume. And I wasn't wrong. 1GHz would only give us a max average FPS of 64, <laughs> which could be beaten by my toaster once overclocked. At 1080p increasing to 2GHz gave us almost double the performance, raising the values to a good average of 126 FPS. 3GHz gave us once again a really good performance boost to 187 average FPS and most importantly 145 FPS in the 1% lows as opposed to 94.9 with 2GHz. The results are more or less the same equal at all resolutions because like I said, this game is CPU dependent, so even at 4K, the bottleneck is the CPU and not the RX 5700 XT. Well, let's now go to the conclusion. Tonic. <laughs> and well, I, I don't know why I think this... I don't know why I think... Uh, this is actually a good joke, but at least it makes me laugh. Anyway. So guys, concluding. As we can see, it depends on the game engine uh, and how the frequency scales. So in some game engines, some games, the, uh, the, um, the frequency matters a lot. In others, not really. For example, in games like Doom Eternal or in games like Control, mostly for example Control, uh, the game is really, really GPU dependent. So Unless you are using 1 GHz, the results will be almost the same. With 2 GHz, 3 GHz, 4 GHz and 4.4 GHz, the only difference was not the average FPS, but the 1% lows. And even in the 1% lows, the difference above 2 GHz frequency was almost null. Of course, if we, if we would go into higher FPS numbers, the differences would start appearing, but still, we were at around 100 average FPS, and the results were more or less the same after 2 GHz, which is pretty nice and shows us how well the game is developed. Doom Eternal is another good example of a well-coded game, so even with 1 GHz, Doom Eternal could run at an average of 140 average FPS, which is quite a lot, and once you go from 1 GHz to 2 GHz, it jumps to over 200 average FPS, like around 240 or 260 if I remember correctly. So that is a huge jump with even 2 GHz GPU, with a, with a 2 GHz CPU frequency, sorry, you can play the game at over 200 average FPS. 
So that's insane. It's two gigahertz. Two gigahertz is like from 2008 or some or something like that. So it's really, really insane how the game handles um, things pretty well with two gigahertz. As opposed to that, we have lighter games that can't run uh, decently well, not even decently well with one gigahertz. And for example, you can see that uh, on LoL League of Legends. League of Legends is a really, really, really light game. And still with one gigahertz while Doom Eternal runs at uh, 140 average FPS, League of Legends runs at 60. Uh, like I said before, Doom Eternal takes advantage of the multi-threading, so hence the results being what they are. And League of Legends using DX9, well, it doesn't. So maybe it is using like one or two cores, maybe three cores, one for audio, maybe three cores or four cores at max, and that is why uh, the results with one gigahertz are really, really low. So League of Legends, it is time to step up your game. And while we have pretty interesting results overall, some games have huge boosts and scale really, really well with frequency, some others not at all. Uh, well, and that's all for today's video, guys. I hope you really, really enjoyed the video. I made this video because I wanted to see the results. I wanted to see how the frequency would scale, how the CPU would behave with different, uh, with different frequencies. Uh, and I wanted you guys to see that also because I thought it would be a really interesting video to watch. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video and see you in the next one, which will be the review of the AMD 21.1.1 drivers. See you soon guys.